Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 2 of Stone Technology. I want to thank you all so much for all the love and support on the last episode because it almost has 5000 views, which is insane. So thank you, thank you all so much. I have done a few things in between episodes, mainly I did a little bit of fishing so we could get some fish and turn those into squid bait and I believe we can do that again and then place this over here and it should work if we move out of range. I don't know if we even have enough space to move out of range but this should eventually spawn us squid. The reason that I want squid is because I want a drawer key for quantification and to get that we need to craft a drawer key with a book and quill. And the book and quill is an ink sack. An ink sack can only be gotten from squid or getting squid essence, which we're gonna get to in the future. I leave for like five minutes and one of the squids manages to kill itself and apparently the ink sack or whatever it dropped despawned or possibly didn't drop anything. But, what? What did I do? The loot mod, yes, those are the real textures. I got nothing from wood. Oh, anyway. I have an ink sack now, so we can craft ourselves with some paper, possibly a book. Yeah, we can do two of those and slime. Can we even get slime? Can I even make a book? Well, we can't make a book just yet. We need to spawn in a cow, so we need some cow bait, which is a bit of wheat. So we need some wheat seeds, and I think we can get some seeds by sieving some dirt in a heavy sieve. And even an upgraded mesh will help actually get us all the things. So the other thing that I did in between episodes, I started sieving with an iron mesh. Because we got iron in the last episode, I just upgraded it really quickly. And in here we have a bunch of stuff. And mainly we're going to grab six diamonds and six emeralds. And we're going to upgrade this mesh right away. Firstly to a diamond mesh. Put it in our inventory so we get the quest complete. And then the emerald mesh, like so. And now we can actually sieve the compressed dirt and get our inventory filled with all of the seeds. Now that we have a bunch of seeds, we're gonna grab one grass seed and we're gonna toss it right over here. So it's gonna spread to grass so we can eventually spawn us a cow. And then we also need a farming area somewhere. So possibly maybe something like this on the other side could be the case. Before we actually start doing a bunch of digging, let's get a tinker's hammer, shall we? And for that, we're gonna need a bit of bronze, and that requires an alloy kiln, which should be just this. Let's put it right over here. I think we need an engineer's hammer as well, like so. And we can right-click this. There we go. There's an alloy kiln, and I think I have to melt ingots. I can't do the chunks directly. Yeah, so we gotta smelt some stuff. So let's get all of this coal in here and smelt 63 copper and then 21 tin ore, which we can turn into a bunch of bronze. In the meantime, we're also going to craft ourselves some engineer's wire cutters, which is going to complete the immersive tools quest over here. And we can get started with a coke oven, blast furnace, thermal electric generators, all that good stuff. We are also going to need some grout, so I'm going to get that cooking up as well. Four seared bricks, a tinker station, and three blocks of bronze is gonna get us a tinker's anvil made with blocks of bronze, like so. And this allows us to make all of the enhanced tools, which means we can get into a stone hammer. I wonder how slow this hammer will be. It has just stone parts and a wooden part, but it's probably gonna be, yeah, it's faster than mining with a stone pickaxe. Awesome, okay, cool. So we can actually get ourselves a nice looking hole for a little bit of a farming area place. I totally didn't realize you can grow potatoes and wheat and all the good stuff in botany pots. So we did this pretty much for nothing, but it's a space that we can use for something else. But right now, I'm just gonna go through this and actually just vein mine it all. If I even can do that. I can't even do that. So we're gonna get rid of this. You know what I can do? I can vein mine the dirt. That I definitely can do. Okay. Thank you, fruit and vegetable. We don't need you. I'm gonna replace all of this with stone and we're actually gonna set up some botany pots. I set up all the botany pots for all the vegetables and or other crops that are gonna be produced over here and they're slowly but surely doing their thing. Like every minute we get a single crop, which is nice. And then on this side, we're gonna do some of the trees and by some, I mean all. And we have a little simple upgrade that we can do. We can turn our inferium essence that we got in the beginning into some Inferium farmland. And let's do just all 17 right away. 
And we can replace it in all of the botany pots over here as well. But we can do this and then toss in the sapling and it grows in a minute and 35, which is faster than two minutes. So that's going to be quite a big increase. And then in here, we're just going to do all the other saplings. I just need to turn them into actual saplings. We can then add dark oak over here. We can then do spruce as well. Jungle. Birch. And we actually need one extra botany pot for the acacia. And there we go. Acacia over here as well. And now we just have to wait for all of them to produce the resources so we can put them in the appropriate spots in the drawer for which we're going to just wait. And then I'm also going to go over here and change all of these to their appropriate farmland. So that should grow stuff very quickly. Hello, carrot. That's 43 seconds. It was, I think, 49 or so before. So it's a little bit of an increase. Well, every little bit helps. And while we're at it, we're going to get some witch water going, which should, I think, hopefully grow us some mushrooms. At least it did in the past. But with the witch water, I think we can make some soul sand. Yeah, we can make soul soil with coarse dirt, soul sand with sand. Oh, we can get slime. Right, of course, we can make a book if we get some mushrooms. Okay, cool. Uh, we can put in an ancient spore to get a brown mushroom block, which should potentially become a mushroom. Eventually, if we get lucky. There we go. We got one singular brown mushroom. I assume I can grow this in the botany pot as well. I just need mycelium or nylium, for which we need silk touch. Which I guess it's doable. We can get some rose gold, can't we? Yeah, we can make it in the kiln. Copper and gold. That should be easy enough. And then we can turn it into silky cloth and get ourselves the silk touch modifier on one of our tools. There is 20 rose gold ingots, which we can turn into 20 silky cloth. And we can then add silk touch to basically all of our tools. I think that's, yeah, we can make rose gold super easily if we need more of it for other tools. We're just going to add silk touch to everything. So we can actually get stone as well from our hammer. We're also going to add it to our comma because why not? And to be honest, I should have added it to our mattock because that is going to get us silk touch for grass breaking blocks. But we can easily break this and get grass and also mycelium over there. We can then add our mycelium over here and we can grow ourselves some brown mushroom. Nice. The red mushroom we're going to get probably from the nether. I don't see any other way of getting it. Generally in the past, what happened is that these barrels, when you put in some water, it would grow mushrooms on the side, like on these blocks, there would slowly start to form some mushrooms. Uh, apparently that doesn't happen anymore. Or maybe it does, I'm just very unlucky, but we can try and get another mushroom so we can get a slime ball so we can actually make that quantified drawer key. We can actually easily get mushrooms now. We are actually growing them, so that should be super easy enough, and we can do that. Slime block, awesome. We can turn that into some slime balls, grab a couple patterns and a bit of our paper and the ink sack. I forgot one thing, we need feathers, we need chickens. The chicken bait is two wheat seeds. That's doable. Let's try it. We managed to get ourselves the chicken bait working. We needed a whole bunch of ferns and some poppies and a bunch more grass. And now it should spawn some chickens. If we possibly go way over here, we should be far enough away for the chicken to spawn. Here is our very first chicken. And we hope it drops a feather once we kill it. It does not. We need another one. Surely these two chickens will drop a singular feather. That was just a chicken. Seriously? <laughs> oh, three chickens. And no feathers. Well, more chicken bait, I guess. Two more chickens later. Can we get ourselves a feather? We can. Awesome. So you are saved by your other friend, death. Anyway, <laughs> let's go make ourselves the actual book and quill thing so we can actually get things going. Did I not make a book yet? I didn't make a book yet. One book. One book and quill. Drawer key. Quantify key. What a journey a quantify key takes you on. We got ourselves an alloy making machine. We got some witch water. We got a bunch of botany pots. We made a faster mining tool. All that we can. Right click this on drawers so we can see 
how many items we have in each one of them. When you sieve compressed dust in an emerald mesh, you get gunpowder, redstone, bone meal, and glowstone. And in this chest, we have all of that because I sifted around three stacks or so of compressed dust. And we can then take that redstone to turn it into some pistons with a little bit of iron and a bit of cobblestone. And then we're going to craft ourselves some compacting drawers because those are going to be much easier for us to craft compressed cobblestone and gravel and sand and all of that good stuff. And apparently I need a little bit more iron. I think we're going to start off with four compacting drawers just so we can get cobble, gravel, sand and dust as well. So we might as well try and put them like this. And while we're on it, I have prepared a few things to craft ourselves the last tier of cobble gen, which is this guy, the cobble gen tier five. And we're going to toss it right in the back here. Don't know if a hopper is even going to be able to keep up with the speed of this. I mean, it's going to be as fast as a hopper is, I guess. Well, it is doing its thing, which is cool. So I can actually now empty this drawer and just store everything in the compacting drawer. Then we can also toss in the gravel, the sand, which is going to be turned into sandstone, but we can actually probably craft ourselves one piece of compressed sand and toss that in. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, that, that input a, ooh, um, hmm. Can I even get that in a drawer? Cause this is these defaults to sandstone. Well, that's kind of annoying. Is there a way? All I had to do was add a simple line to a specific line in the config for compacting drawers. And we can now toss in sand and we can get compressed sand. Easy enough. I used to compost leaves for dirt, but now that we have botany pots, we can easily compost whatever pretty much. And sugarcane seems to grow as fast as pretty much any of these crops can. And it produces, I believe a hundred in the composter. 80 it what it produces. I think that's okay. I think this does a hundred, right? Yeah, this does a hundred, but this grows every like 40 seconds and this grows like every 20 seconds or so, which in the end, it's not really going to matter. It's dirt, but at least this way, once the sugar cane grows, it's going to compost in here and eventually get us a bunch of dirt. And simple as that, we have crimson fungus growing on top of some crimson nylium, and it's going to produce us netherwort blocks, crimson stems, shroom light, and crimson fungus. I also managed to find some red mushrooms, so we we're growing those as well. As far as the warped fungus is concerned, we need a bit of warped nylium to get these going. So we have to head back into the nether and see if we can find a warped forest. I found a warped forest so we can snag one warped nylium and we're up. I don't want to take care of any zoglins or have any zoglings take care of me. So we're just going to go back home. And in the meantime, I actually managed to kill a couple of foxhounds, which dropped a little bit of leather. I have nine total, which means that we can actually make a backpack as well. Now that we're home, we can craft ourselves a regular old backpack and we can upgrade it with a little bit of iron and I think also a little bit of gold. I think I smelted some more. Yeah, we should have probably enough for an iron backpack, a gold backpack, and then we could invest eight diamonds, which we don't have, so we're not gonna. <laughs> but the gold backpack can go into the backpack slot and then I will bind it to the right key bind. Like so, we can open it with a beam. We have three upgrade slots and a whole bunch of storage space. So we can actually toss in all of our things that we're going to use on a regular basis. While I was in the nether, I managed to kill a couple endermen and got one singular ender pearl, which we're going to use to craft our first feeding upgrade for the backpack. And I believe we can also upgrade it to the advanced one with three redstone, two gold and a diamond like so. And we can toss this inside of the backpack here. And we can set allow on some baked potatoes and we can toss those in here. And we're going to only feed when the player is hungry enough to only waste half the hunger points at most and feed immediately when hurt. That's going to be the setting and it's going to automatically feed us. So we never have to eat again. And it's episode two. Amazing. And that is going to have to wrap up today's episode. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. I am really hoping you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to smash the like button. You can also subscribe to get notified of when new videos go live. 
and you can support me on Patreon as well, if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.